in this lesson we shall discuss the various evidences supporting organic evolution The organic molecules formed in chemical evolution are believed to have led to formation of cells from which other organisms arose, getting complex or complicated with time. Organic molecules are carbon-based. And remember, a molecule is the simplest form of an element or a compound that exists separately. So since these molecules existed separately, then they were combined in a chemical reaction uh, uh, to give rise to the formation of cells from which other organisms have risen from. And there are various evidences supporting organic evolution. First is geographical distribution of organisms. The second one is comparative anatomy, embryology. The third one is compra comparative anatomy. The fourth is cell biology. Fifth, we have fossil records. And lastly, we have comparative serology. Let us begin by looking at geographical distribution. It is believed that until about 250 million years ago, all the land masses on earth formed a single huge land mass called Pangaea. And it is thought to have undergone continental drift, that is splitting into different continents. So here we have the world before continental drift. It was a single land mass connected all over and there were diverse forms of life occupying these places. But after the splitting, um, South America was separated from North America, but initially it was joined at this point of Isthmus of Panama. At the same time, Asia and North America was joined at this point. But in the after continental drift it was split and therefore the organisms that used to occupy around these uh, regions were geographically isolated they could not interbreed consequently organisms in certain regions became geographically isolated or separated and did not have a chance to interbreed with other organisms in other regions. For example, those organisms that used to occupy that region that used to connect North America to South America were separated geographically in terms of position or places. And if they were separated, they could not interbreed from those with, uh, from other regions. Such organisms underwent evolution in their own and have become characteristically different uh, from organisms in other places. For instance, poached mammals like kangaroo, wallaby, and koala bear are found in Australia. While the opossum is the only survival, surviving representative of the poached mammals in North America. Mammals are those uh, members of kingdom or uh, kingdom anima animalia and they have ma mammary glands to breast feed the young ones, hence the name mammals. They also give birth to live young ones compared to other organisms like reptiles which lay eggs. These ones give birth to young ones because they carry the embryo until it attains its full or maximum development before it is released from the placenta or the womb but there are mammals like these ones who are called poached mammals the embryo develops up to certain stages from then it is ejected or released from the uterus and then it completes its development in a special structure or sac 
beneath the bell called a poach. The other name for these poached mammals are called marsupials. Monkeys with long prehensile tails inhabit the Amazon forest in South America, while the short-tailed monkeys inhabit Africa. We also have the panthers and the jaguar representing the cat family in Amazon forest. Leopards and cheetahs occupy Africa and in Asia there are tigers. So this is geographical distribution. We have panthers and jaguar in Amazon forest. These panthers and jaguar cannot be seen in Africa. There are no tigers in Africa. They are only found in Asia. So this shows how um, organisms were distributed in different places. And that is what we call geographical distribution of organisms. Another evidence for organic evolution is fossil records. Fossils are remains of organisms preserved accidentally in naturally occurring materials for several years. And they give a proof of the type of plant or animal that existed at certain geological period. It also gives evidence of the morphological or rather anatomical structures that have taken place over a long period of time. So these morphological or anatomical structures are the changes in the body form. For example, the human skull. There are, dif there are dif differences between the uh, skull of the past ape and the modern man. So those are the uh, structural changes we are talking about. And fossils gives evidence of the differences. The age of a fossil can be determined through a process called radioactive dating because carbon is a component of all living organisms. Therefore, it occurs or it is present in their remains. And that is what we call radioactive dating. Something which is radioactive uh, is able to spontaneously uh, degenerate or sp split its nucleus, uh, uh, its atomic nucleus to release some electrons. And there are limitations of using fossil records uh, to determine evolutionary history of all modern day organisms since there are what we call missing links or missing fossil records since some parts or a whole organism decayed and some were scavenged upon they were eaten by scavengers scavengers are these organisms or uh, animals that feed on remains examples is the hawk sedimentation may have distorted or destroyed some parts of an, orga orga of an organism giving the wrong picture of the structures so the process of, diment of sedimentation when rocks are being formed so uh, some sediments or a particular fluid fills some other remains and then uh, those remains are distorted they are destroyed therefore we have a wrong picture of the structures geological activities like earthquake faulting may have destroyed the fossils so geology uh, geological activities like earthquakes faulting they destroyed these evidences Charles Darwin proposed that human beings descended from ape-like creatures. Archaeologists or people who study fossils have attempted to draw evolutionary history of humans using evidence of fossil skeletal uh, remains. 
These include the skull, the limb bones and teeth as well as using cultural artifacts and these are the primitive tools that were used by the apes for example cave paintings scrappers broken pottery and hand axes that were used for hunting evolutionists accept that hominidae fa family to which human beings belong evolved from a primate stock as you can see here this is the skull of a precancer, uh, a member of the hominidae family to which human beings belong, is dated 20 million years ago. And then from there, evolutionary history has been drawn uh, and compared to the Australopithecus, which occurred 4 million years ago. And this is its skull. There are some changes in the uh, structure of the skull. Then Homo erectus occurred around 1.8 million years ago. You can see the differences. The, the differences, there is change in the structure of the skull until we have the modern man, uh, which was uh, seen around 10,000 years ago. So the skull is now similar to that of the modern man, but you can see there are some uh, small uh, similarities. That shows that fossils. Uh, uh, show the type of or plan or animal that existed several years ago and tell us the evolutionary history. Let us look at the differences between apes and humans. The ape has a, a brain capacity of 500 centimeters cube. Therefore, he was a slow learner. But the current human being is having an enlarged brain capacity of 1350 centimeters cubed. That means uh, it has a high intellectual capacity. You can see here the brain size is very small and this is a, this is a skull. But here the brain is enlarged. And then the ape had large intestines and canines for defense and killing the prey. Here you can see the canines are big. But for the modern man, the canines are small, although both of them are omnivorous, they feed on flesh. The ape had an elongated and narrow pelvis. Pelvis is that hip bone. So you can see even here, it is, it is, it is, it is elongated. But the modern man is having a broad pelvis to allow for attachment of muscle sinews, the modern man is moving in an upright posture. The ape had quadrupedal locomotion. You can see it was using all the limbs. But human has bipedal locomotion using only two these two hind limbs. And, it, and the posture is upright. The four limbs were used for arboreal locomotion and walking in the ape. But in case of human humans, the four limbs were used for manipul uh, manipulative purposes like uh, tool making. The hind limbs of ape has an opposable toe for grasping tree plunges. You can see it is extended. This is an opposable toe of the hind foot so that it can grasp the tree branches but the other man the, the modern man has none opposable um, toe to maintain stability on the ground that marks the end of that lesson finish this assignment it will give you a better understanding of what we discussed in this lesson goodbye